Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. We've got a very exciting one today because I'm gonna be sharing with you a winning email template. At this point in the channel, we've talked about results, we've talked about outreach methods, we've talked about picking your niche, picking your service, how to hire a team. At this point, I pretty much touched on every single topic, but I get this question a lot, and it's what do I actually say to the client to get them on a call? What do I actually say to get a response from the prospect. And that, my friends, is what I wanna show you in this video. I'm gonna be walking you through a bulletproof structure that you're gonna be able to apply immediately onto your emails to get a much higher response rate. And not only emails, but messages on Facebook, even video audits, Instagram DMs, et cetera, et cetera. I'm really excited for this and, and for you guys to take your outreach to the next level. And without further ado, let's hop on my computer and let me walk you through this. Alright, alright, alright. So we're gonna have five different steps that you need to make sure that you have in place uh, to ensure that you get a high response rate and a high action taker rate. So the first step is personalized acknowledgement. You want them to know that there's a personalized touch to the email as soon as you possibly can. And this really comes down to human psychology. Look, if, it, if something's not applicable to us, we filter it out very quickly. And especially if you're reaching out to high quality clients, they get so many emails that their walls, the walls that they've built around spam email and, and just emails that are not within their organization is very high. And so the quickest way to just completely disregard that email is to know that it's not personalized, that, it, that's, that the person hasn't really done their homework um, to reach out to them. So you wanna make sure that you, you add that personalized touch to the email as soon as possible. And you can do this even if you have an automation funnel, which is uh, what, what I have in, in my case, right? And so you can add a personalized touch to it. And it's what, what I call personalized automation, which is absolutely the way, the way to go. So that's really the, the first thing. Um, and the, the second reason why this is incredibly important is because it strokes their ego. So it builds good report. It, it builds good emotions, right? Especially if they're not having a good day. Us humans, we just like acknowledgement. We like other people to appreciate what we've done. So it really works for those two reasons. And if you're wondering what should I put here, you can just take a look at their IG or LinkedIn bio. That gives you a very clear snapshot of what their mission is and, and what really is very important to them without you having to dig in and spend you know, 20, 30 minutes doing research on a prospect, which I, by the way, I really do not recommend because if this prospect has not shown interest on you, you should definitely not be spending 30 minutes just uh, you know collating all this information. Another great place is the website mission. Uh, so you can just read through it very, very quickly and really understand what their, their whole company is about. Another idea could be mentioning the founder names, which works very, very well, uh, simply because they see that, okay, you, you've at least taken your time and not only are you acknowledging the person that you're speaking to, right? For example, Chris, but you're also mentioning Laura and Charles, right? And, and that makes for amazing conversions because they can clearly see that you, you've taken the time and then this person will go ahead and share it with their team. So I truly believe that the strategy is very, very powerful. So. That's really the first step that you guys need to keep in mind. The fact that you need to make sure as soon as possible that they know that email is for them and that, that has been tailored to them. Um, then the second step is who you are. So you need to take this time to build authority. And the reason why you want to build authority is because simply for most business owners, their biggest fear is wasting their time, right? And wasting their time means talking to people that are not qualified. And so when you build authority, what you're doing there is you're telling them that you deserve their attention. Okay? and that you're gonna be of value to them. And at the end of the day, people wanna do business with people that can add value to them. Here is where picking your sub niche plays a huge role as it builds massive rapport. There's really a few ways that you can build your authority. If you've had clients in the past, maybe you can talk about your results for that client. If you don't have any clients, talk about the way you guys do things, right? Talk about your standards, talk about your mission as, a, as, a, as an agency, right? Even if you don't have any clients, you still should have something that you stand for, okay? Uh, and so, that's a good way of doing it. The second thing is picking your niche is gonna allow you to build massive rapport with this prospect. And the reason why that is, is because if for example, that prospect is a supplement uh, brand, right? And you are in the uh, health space, that automatically tells them that you speak their language. And not only that, but you should be speaking their language, right? It, it really sets you apart from other people reaching out to them that aren't quite as qualified, that aren't quite as specific as to what their niche is. And so that, that is why I'm a big, big proponent of, uh, and just the importance of picking your sub niche. And the reason why it is, is because there's this thing called in-group, out-group bias. And basically what it means is that people favor people that are alike, that are in the same type of group, that, that share the same type of values, ethics, et cetera, et cetera. And so when they see that you are in their in, in their space, right, it builds this in-group, out-group bias, and they favor you over other candidates, and they're more likely to listen to you, okay? So that's really the second step. The third step is what you do. So. 
what you want to do in this uh, point is so uh, you know step, step two as i said we want to build authority step three we want to build social proof okay so if applicable mention clients you've worked with in the past uh your core achievements or even just your work philosophy and, and that's kind of you know it's, it's similar to what i said when it when it came to building authority look if you don't have any clients you still you, you should have a, a philosophy or, and, and the way you do things right and so you can use that yes having clients validates you to an extent right but what also validates you is your mission is the you know the, the team that you built right and there's nothing stopping you from talking about that even if you don't have any clients okay so that's uh that's that's the first thing and the second thing is your mission statement very very straightforward mission statement that should contain your niche it should contain the very clear and specific outcome it should contain your uh, service and it should contain your appealing promise and if you guys want to learn more about that uh, actually that, that, that's really one of the things that i cover in my free smma training where i cover how to sign and keep four figure smma clients one of the things that i cover there is uh picking your your mission and i basically give you a whole structure on how to do that and how to go about um how to go about building a killer mission so if you want to check that out i'll leave the link uh, down below and you guys can uh, opt in there and just watch it there's nothing for sale uh, as well so um just pure value and some of the strategies that yeah, i'll cover there you can go ahead and immediately implement on your agency so that is the third thing the fourth thing is why you're contacting them you want to make it very clear why that is, right? And what I'd like to do for this is what I call the sandwich strategies. It's a term that I've coined. Um, and uh, basically the reason why I think this works much better than going straight for the, hey, you're, you're doing this wrong or you're leaving money in this way or you know you have this leaky aspect of your business is simply because yes, we've stroked their ego um, at the very start, right? But you don't want to come at them with a very negative outlook simply because that does not make them feel good. Yes, we want to make sure that they know and we kind of want to build a bit of FOMO and we want to make sure that they're, you know, this is an opportunity that they're passing on and they should be doing things much better. We want to do that. But trust me when I say, I, I, and, and things like I've iterated so many different variables, right? I've, I've done the kind of, you know, cocky style and I've done the very like negative style and to, to get a reaction from them. And I've done the, the very positive style as well, which didn't quite work. And I've tried this style and this style works. And the reason why that is because it builds rapport. You are respectful, but at the same time, you make it very clear for them that they're, they're not doing things quite well. Okay? And they're much more receptive to hearing that once you've been positive with them, once you've given them credits. And that is how humans work. If someone is just bashing you, right, you are just going to block all that feedback, all that criticism, right? Because as humans, we want to feel good. Okay? And we don't want to have negative emotions thrown at us. But if someone starts off by saying, hey, you did this uh, thing very well, but I think you could improve on this, this and that, right? That is constructive feedback. And the reason why it's so powerful is because we are in a much more receptive frame. We are willing to accept that feedback because they've opened us up with the positive post, okay? They've kind of got, their, got, got our attention by the positive because everyone wants to hear positive feedback, right? And now we're inserting the, the things that need to be changed, okay? Uh, it's something that I implement with my team, it's something that I implement with uh, clients, it's something that I implement on sales calls, even with friends, family, whatever it is, it's a strategy that really works amazingly well. Um, and so, yeah, well, what I recommend you do, the, the way I recommend you structure it is, uh, first, of, first of all, you want to do the good. So what do you like about what they're doing? And trust me, they must be doing something well if you're reaching out to them, right? Because you're not reaching out to some very low quality brands, right? Especially if you're in the e-commerce space. The second thing is the bad. So what are the leaky aspects? You and, and these are the obviously the aspects that you would aim to fix. If you don't offer like logistics or if you don't offer the packaging, don't talk about their packaging, right? Obviously, off, you know, talk about their marketing strategy. What are some of the areas where they're weak at? Um, and the final thing is again, good, right? You want to reference the, uh, and, and the way this, this good is a bit different from the first good, because this good is all about the amazing upside and the possible upside of fixing this, right? And so instead of saying, Hey, you know, you're going to, if you don't fix this, you are going to perish and you're going to vanish, right? Instead of doing that, I'm saying I'm framing it positively because otherwise it's too much negative. Okay. And they're not going to be receptive to that. And they are going to feel like you are attacking. Okay, so that's really the fourth thing. And the next thing you want to do is you want to drop a big thumbs up. YouTube just loves when that thing turns blue, so I really appreciate it. And with that being said, let's get back into the video. The fifth uh, thing is your value. What you want to do here is explain to them how you think you could be of value. And one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to stay away from implying you working with them. Focus on how you can add value to them now, whether that's a free consultation, whether that's, hey, check this, you know, video audit out, or whether that's a, you know, a marketing plan or a marketing strategy or, you know, some of the ways that they could be doing so much better, right? You want to make sure that you focus on adding value now so that you can get a call with them, but do not imply you working with them from the start, okay? Simply because that puts you in a very scarcity uh, position where it feels like, I mean, you haven't even qualified them. You don't even know whether they're a good fit, right? Uh, but all of a sudden, you're already implying that they can work with you, right? That, that is not a 
uh, a strong position uh, to hold as an agency owner. And uh, the other thing is, it's just purely disrespectful. And it's something that's gonna repel them because they feel a, a sense of neediness even, uh, a sense of desperateness. Almost you being a bit too desperate. So do not imply them working with you at any point during that close interaction before you jump on a call. That is very important, okay? If you do, you're probably not even gonna get them to jump on a call with you which is what we're trying to do with uh, all our outreach, okay? And the final thing is a call to action. So make it a win for them, no matter what happens on the call. This is massive. Honestly, getting meetings is actually not that hard. It honestly just comes down to people making it hard for themselves. The main thing here is ask yourself, why would a prospect not want to jump on a call with me? And the main two reasons are, number one, they think you're gonna waste their time, okay? Because you're not uh, qualified, you, you're not an authority, you don't know what you're speaking about, okay? And the second thing is they're not gonna resonate with you, they're not gonna like you as a person, right? They, they might think that, uh, for lack of a better word, you are a bit of a creep, right? Uh, and, um, and unfortunately, that is how we as humans work. We do not wanna risk hanging out with people that we're not gonna get along with. You can see this, if you go to a party, if you go to a, a club, if you go to a, a, a dinner where you don't know half the people, this always happens, right? And so they finally get to meet you. So you wanna do as much uh, rapport building as possible. You wanna give them a bit of a glimpse into your personality. Are you a fun person to talk to? Are you a very experienced person? Are you a very professional person? You wanna give them a glimpse into your personality, okay? So that it is very clear for them that you are not gonna be this person that's gonna either waste their time or they're not gonna get along with and they're just gonna jump on a call and they're gonna feel awkward and it's just not gonna be a good experience. It's not gonna be good emotions, okay? And really the overarching thing here that I want you guys to keep in mind is humans are always looking for good emotions. We're looking to feel Good. So we move away from negative emotions. That is why we use the sandwich right. That is why we convey our personality. Okay? So that is the first thing. The second thing is you want to make it a no brainer. Okay. What are some things that they can expect from the uh, call with you? Right. What are some things that they can take away and apply themselves to if they want? Right. What, what are some things that are going to get uh, their foot through the door? Make it a no brainer. You know, talk to them about what you're going to cover in that call. Talk to them about the fact that they can just leave if they want to, right? There's no sense attached. Talk about that. Um, and the final thing is future protect. Future protection is a very powerful thing that we as humans have and that animals do not have. And it's basically, we can look into the future and imagine a certain scenario, okay? And uh, you wanna make sure that you tie the future of the goal to a positive emotion, right? And, and to value. So. Talk to them about, as I said, talk to them about what they can expect in the call, how long it would last, uh, which is uh, powerful, and uh, what you will cover, and, and what they will be able to get out of that call, okay? And look, yes, they should know that by the end of it, the outcome is to get them to sign on as a client, okay? And they, they should know that, otherwise they're just time wasters. But you wanna make sure that they know the value upfront of the, the call, and it's not just a sales call uh, for that matter. Uh, where they're gonna feel like they're gonna jump on this call and they're just gonna be sold to very aggressively and it's not gonna be a good experience for them, okay? Um, uh, what you will cover, etc., etc. The more clarity they have, the more likely they are to accept it. Okay, and that is one of the things that I found from just sending at this point thousands of thousands and uh, thousands of outreach um, is the fact that the more clear you are about what they can expect on your call to action, the more likely they are to take that action because they can decide whether they're gonna like it or they're not. Right? And look, if they decide that it's not of value to them, then great. Like I, I want to know. Look, I'd rather know than them either just ignore it or jumping on a call. Uh, because they didn't know what to expect from it. And look, I'm not scared of the no, so I'd rather have them know um, what, they get, what they're getting into and saying, hey, this is not for me, than them getting into it and uh, them not being qualified. But, but on the flip side also, they are more likely to accept it once they are very clear about the outcome that they can get. For example, if you've ever jumped on a masterclass, a good masterclass like mine, you'll see that on the opt-in page, so it's not this page, but on the opt-in page, I make it very clear what you're gonna be able to take away from the masterclass. And not only that, but you actually do, right? Once you finish the masterclass, you realize that I've stayed true to that promise and you're more likely to take action, okay? So, that is pretty much it. Those are the six steps that you need to implement on your outreach messaging, your emails, your messages, your video audits, your calls, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that you absolutely crush it and to make sure that you get responses and meetings booked. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions, and I'll be sure to check those out. The final thing is if you haven't joined the free private mentorship community, the client closures is an incredible community full of like many people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always, guys, I hope everything's going well in your agency journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.